everybody, Grammy Deb here. Um, I'm going to start on a chapter book here, and uh, this is the one that's for you, a little bit older kids might enjoy, um, boys and girls alike. Uh, it's supposed to be a really good book, and it's a series, and there's uh, a ton of books in this series. So, this one's called um, Hank the Cow Dog. I had mentioned it in some of the other ones, and this is the original Avengers of Hank the Cow Dog by John R. Erickson, and this is book number one. Um, I'm going to read directly from the book, not from uh, like I was doing before, because there's not many pictures in this book. So um, when there is a picture, I, I'll turn it and show it to you, but there's not like one on every page that I need to show you. So uh, we're going to start with this one, and I'm going to read the introduction to you. And uh, we'll get started with this series. This is Murder on the Ranch. Where was I? Under the gas tanks, catching up on my sleep. All at once, Drover was right there, beside me, jumping up and down, and giving off a high-pitched squeal of his that kind of bores into your eardrums. You can't ignore him when he does that. Will you please shut up? Hank, oh, Hanky, it's just terrible. You wouldn't believe. Hurry and wake up. I seen his tracks down by the creek. Get up before he escapes. I pushed myself up and went nose to nose with the noisemaker. Quit hopping around. Quit making all that racket. Hold still and state your business. Oh, Hank, all right, I'll try. Oh, Hank, there's been a killing right here on the ranch, and we've slept through it. Chapter 1. Bloody Murder. It's me again, Hank the Cow Dog. I just got some terrible news. There's been a murder on the ranch. I know I shouldn't blame myself. I mean, a dog is only a dog. He can't be everywhere at once. When I took this job as head of ranch security, I knew that I was only flesh and blood, four, four legs, a tail, and a couple ears, and a pretty nice kind of nose that the women really go for. Two bushels of hair and another half bushel of Mexican sand burrs. You add that all up and you don't get Superman, just me, good old, easygoing Hank, who works hard, tries to do his job, and gets very little cooperation from anyone else around here. I'm not complaining. I knew this wouldn't be an easy job. It took a special kind of dog, strong, fearless, dedicated, and above all, smart. Obviously, Drover didn't fit. The job fell in on my shoulders. It was destiny. I couldn't escape the broom of history that swept through. Anyway, I took the job. Head of Ranch Security? Gee, I was proud of that title. Just the sound of it made my tail wag. But now this, a murder right under my nose? I know I shouldn't blame myself, but I do. I got the report this morning around dawn. I had been up most of the night patrolling the northern perimeter of the ranch headquarters. I had heard some coyotes yapping up there and I went to check it out. I told Drover where I was going and he came up lame all of a sudden said he needed to rest his right front leg i went alone didn't find anything the coyote stayed out of the pasture i figured there were two maybe three of them they yapped for a couple of hours making fun of me calling me ugly names and daring me to come out and fight well, you know me. I'm no dummy. 
There is a thin line between heroism and stupidity, and I try to stay on the south side of it. I didn't go out and fight, but I answered them bark for bark, yap for yap, and name for name. The coyotes hadn't been built. I'm sorry. The coyote hasn't been built who can out yap Hank the cow dog. A little before dawn, Lopper, one of the cowboys on this outfit, struck his head, stuck his head out the door and bellered, Shut up that yapping, you idiot! I guess he thought there was only one coyote out there. They kept it up, and I gave it back to them. Next time Lopper came to the door, he was armed. He fired a gun into the air and squalled something about how a man couldn't sleep around here with all the dad dang noise. I agreed. Would you believe it? Them coyotes yipped louder than ever, and I had no choice but to give it back to them. Lopper came back out on the porch and fired another shot. This one came so close to me that I heard the hum. This, <coughs> excuse me, Lopper must have lost his bearings or something. So I barked louder than ever to give him my position. And you know, to let him know that I was out there protecting the ranch. The next bullet just darn near got me. I mean, I felt the wind of it as it went past. That was enough for me. I shut her down for the night. If Lopper couldn't aim any better than that, he was liable to hurt somebody. I lay low for a while, hiding in the shelter belt, until I was sure that artillery had gone back to bed. Then went down for a roll in the sewer cleanup, washed myself real good, came out feeling refreshed and ready to catch up on my sleep, trotted down to the gas tank and found Drover curled up in his favorite spot. I ground him off my gunny sack. Beat it, son. Make way for the night patrol. He didn't want to move, so I went to sterner measures, put some fangs to him. That moved him out, and he didn't show no signs of lameness either. I have an idea that Drover is lameless. I have an idea that where Drover is lameless is between his ears. I did my usual bedtime ritual of walking in a tight circle around my bed until I found just exactly the spot I wanted and then flopped down. Oh, that felt good. I wiggled around and finally came to rest with all four paws sticking up in the air. I closed my eyes and had some wonderful twitching dreams about don't recall exactly the subject matter, but most likely they were about Beulah, the neighbor's collie. I dreamed about her a lot. What a woman. Makes my old heart pound just to think about her. Beautiful brown and white hair, big eyes, nose that tapers down to a point. Not quite as good as mine, but so what? and nice ears that flap when she runs. Only trouble is that she's crazy about a spotted bird dog. Without a doubt, the ugliest, dumbest, worthless cur I've ever met. What could be uglier than a spotted, short-haired dog with a long, skinny tail? And what could be dumber or more worthless than a dog that goes around chasing birds. They called him Plato. I don't know why, 
except maybe because his eyes look like plates half the time, empty plates. He don't know a cow from a sow, but do you think he that makes him humble? No, sir. He thinks that bird chasing is hot stuff. What really hurts, though, is that Beulah seems to agree. Don't understand that woman, but I dream about her a lot. Anyway, where was I? Under the gas tank, catching up on my sleep. All at once, Driver was right there beside me, jumping up and down, and giving off a high-pitched squeal of his that kind of bores into your eardrums. You can't ignore him when he does that. Well, I throwed open one eye, kept the other one eye shut so that I could get some halfway sleep. Will you please shut up? Hank, oh, Hanky, it's just terrible. You won't believe. Hurry and wake up. It seems I seen his tracks down on the creek. Get up before he escapes. I throwed open the other eye, pushed myself up, and went nose to nose with the noisemaker. Quit hopping around. Quit making all that racket. Hold still and state your business. Oh, Hank, all right, I'll try. He tried and was none too successful, but he did get the message across. Oh, Hank, there's been a killing right here in the ranch, and we've slept through it. Huh? I was coming awake by then, and the word killing sent a jolt clean out to the end of my tail. Who's been killed? They hit the chicken house, Hank. I don't know how they got in, but they did. Busted in there and killed one of those big leghorn hens. Killed her dead, Hank. And oh, the blood. Well, that settled it. I had no choice but to go back on duty. A lot of dogs would have just turned over and gone back to sleep. But I take this stuff pretty serious. We trotted up to the chicken house and Drover kept jumping up and down and, t and talking. I found some tracks down by the creek. I'm sure they belong to the killer, Hank. I'm just sure they do. What kind of tracks? Coyote? Hmm. We reached the chicken house, and sure enough, there was the hen lying on the ground, and she was still dead. I walked around the body, sniffing it good and checking the signs. I noticed the position of the body and memorized every detail. The hen was lying on her left side, pointing towards the northeast, with one foot out and the other foot curled up under her wing. Her mouth was open, and it appeared to me that she had lost some tail feathers. Uh huh. I'm beginning to see the pattern. What? Tell me, Hank. Who done it? Not yet. Where'd you see them tracks? There weren't any tracks around the corpse. Ground was too hard. Drover took off in a run, and I followed him down into the brush along the creek. He stopped and pointed to some fresh tracks in the mud. They're there, Frank. They're there, Hank. Just where I found them. Are you proud of me? I pushed him aside and studied the sign. Look it over real careful. Sniffed it. Gave it the full treatment. Then I raised up. Okay, I've got it now. It's all clear. Them's coon tracks, son. Not coyote. I can tell from the scent. Coons must have attacked while I was out on patrol. They're sneaky. You've got to watch them every minute. Drover squinted at the tracks. Are you sure those are coon tracks? They sure look like coyote to me. 
You don't go by the look, son. You go by the smell. The, this nose of mine don't lie. If I say it's coon, you'd better believe there's a coon at the end of them tracks. And I'm fixing to clean house on them. Stay behind me and don't get hurt. I treaded my way through the creek, willows over the sand, through the water. I never lost a scent. In the heat of the chase, all my senses come alive and point like a blazing arrow towards the enemy. In a way, I felt sorry for the coon. Even though he committed a crime and become my mortal enemy, with me on his trail, the little guy just didn't have a chance. One of the disadvantages of being as big and deadly as I am is that you sometimes find yourself in sympathy with the other guy. But part of being head of ranch security is learning to ignore that kind of emotion. I mean, to hold down this job, you have to be cold and hard. The scent was getting stronger all the time and it didn't smell exactly like any coon I'd come across before. All at once I saw him. I stopped dead still and, dro and drove her. The little dummy ran right into me and almost had a heart attack. I guess he thought I was a giant coon or something. It's hard to say what he thinks. The coon was hiding in some bushes about five feet in front of me. I could hear him chewing on something, and that smell was real strong now. What's that? Drover whispered, sniffing the air. Coon, what do you think? I glanced back at him. He was shaking with fear. You ready for some combat experience? Yes, he squeaked. All right, here's the plan. I'll jump him and try to get him behind the neck. You come in the second wave and take him, take what you can. If you run away like you did last time, I'll sweep the corral with you and give you a whooping. You won't forget. All right, let's move out. I crutched down and crept forward. Every muscle in my highly conditioned body taut and ready for action. Five feet, four feet, three feet, two. I sprang through the air and hit right in the middle of the biggest porcupine I ever saw. There's a picture for you. Here he goes through the air. And that's the end of chapter one. So I'll go on to read chapter two the next time. Hope you're liking this. Bye-bye.